How are you doing, audience? Welcome back to the land of Pew. Today we continue to explore House of a Hundred Wolves, and although the last time, with a little help of Morshu, we managed to get past through the first opposing team, it wasn't long after that until we faced another one. As you would expect though, my lineup changed completely as well, and in today's face-off, I'm using 6 completely new pokes, and I think it's safe to say, most of them you probably won't see anywhere else. So without keeping you waiting any longer, let the show begin. Leading off on my side is one and only Kabucha. especially defensive Lily, and there is one good reason for that. Looking on the team preview, it doesn't look like he has anything that can threaten me without setting up, so I can freely set up my stealth rocks and spread some status around. That was my initial game plan, but don't forget, we are facing a team from House of Wolves, a place where there are no rules and nothing is what it seems to be. So Wigglytuff, which seemed like a defensive supporter, pulls off the unprotected focus punch on the turn 1 as I toxic him. But Bambucha, even without any physical defense investment, takes it, shakes off the dust and recovers most of the damage on his switch to Natu. Then he U-turns straight out of there to scout whether I'm carrying any rock type attack, but Lily, without any attacks, is doing exactly what it's meant for, sits here, takes all the hits, sets up the stealth rocks and spreads the toxic around the opposing team. In exchange, however, he burns me, but honestly, I prefer that more than any other status, especially Toxic, because the residual damage doesn't rack up with the time and I can easily recover it off. Right there, we both predict each other to switch out, hence he goes for a will o -Wisp as I go for a Toxic again, so we end up with completely useless turn. But then, he realizes that he is not going to win this tall war, so he decides to change his strategy and hit me with everything he's got. That is why he brings his Parasect, but takes a 25% damage from Stealth Rock on the switch and another tiny bit from Toxic, which I go for purely out of lack of better move, so whatever he wants to do, he has a limited time for that. He sets up an agility as I recover off again, and then he hits me with Exizor, which boosted by Life Rock does a lot of damage, and since I don't want to risk switching to Relicans on a predicted Seed Bomb, I decide to stay in and let him finish off my Lily, because it has done more than enough already, and he goes down on the same turn to Life Orb combined with Toxic damage. Then he brings back his Solrak, probably to try burning something else on my team, but I want to get rid of Stealth Rocks on my side, so for that reason I go to Tentacle. But knowing that as long as his Solrak is alive, there is not much point in spinning, I just decide to do some good damage with Escold instead, and only then, because it looks like he is not gonna survive another one joined with a toxic damage, I decide to rapid spin predicting his switch. He does indeed switch out and brings his gold duck, so I figured it's time to bring my Trollicans to scout what he wants to do. He goes for a Psychic on my switch, and by the amount it did, I'm guessing it's Choice Scarf, so that gives me a free turn to set up a Call Mind. Yes, Call Mind. Is there a problem? He goes back to Solrak, probably as a death fodder, but quickly realizes that it wasn't a good decision, because super effective Earthquake does 61 damage after leftovers, which is pretty much equivalent of nothing, and I just keep setting up Call Mines in his face. Then he goes for a will o -Wisp, thinking that residual damage should cut my survivability, but this Relicanth, just like Whiskash is running rest talk, I get up to plus 3, spawn another Earthquake and rest off all of the damage as he goes down to a Toxic damage, so this is when Lilip's work comes into play. So now he puts all of his chances on one card, the 66% chance that I'm not gonna attack him, brings his Ryolu, sets up a Sword Dance as I go for a rest, and then another one as I Sleep Talk a Calm Mind. It is right now though, when the fact that I'm battling House of Wolves takes its toll, because this is probably the greatest play that I have ever seen in Pew. Using his prankster ability and the fact that I just used Calm Mind, he goes for a copycat to raise his special defense, which in turn allows him to take a skull without the focus sash and power up his reversal. What the fuck? <laughs> Seriously, mind blown. Unfortunately for him, I get a burn on the way, and I'm pretty sure that it saved me from prankster copycat sweep. I finish him off with another scold, and now back comes Nato to revenge kill him with a nightshade, and funnily enough, these 2 HP that I was missing from leaving it probably saved him from getting swept by this relicanth, so clearly, this battle is anything but settled. I still have a few pokes that haven't seen any action yet, and one of them is Yoshi, Sheer Force Home Close Begon. Now, let me tell you how much power this combination packs. I set up a Home Close knowing that he can't take me out in one hit, and then go for a Life Orb and Sheer Force boosted Dragon Rush. 
Max defense if I light, get out of there. But because he still has his gold attack left and I don't want anything on my team to take unnecessary damage, again I just stay in and let him get an easy revenge kill. Then I bring my Rufflet, which is in fact a hassle variant, so I miss a Brave Red on his switch to Wigglytuff and then Superpower giving him a free double edge. But then his Wigglytuff is like, you know, Vision Express is just behind the corner and Apache replies, I don't remember asking you a goddamn thing. Finally puts his shit together and demolishes him with a superpower. So he is down to his gold duck and decides to lock himself on a Psyche rather than Surf slash Hydro Pump, knowing that it's the only move that hits my tentacle super effectively, but what he doesn't know about is that with Rapid Spin, Knock Off, Toxic Spikes and Scald it also can touch him at all, and from the range I'm at, I would go down in 3 or 4 hits. But anyway, Psychic without stab is not enough to take out my Apache, I rust off almost back up to full and then decide to death fodder my tentacle to let my bad piggy demolish him with a life orb head smash knowing that I can take one hit from him, but he gets a crit, so that destroys my plan. No matter though, because Apache is still there, sets up a home close once again, takes him out with a brave bird which also gets a completely useless crit, and that is the game. And there we are. With that very narrow 1-0, we continue our adventure. Ahead, there is one final challenge awaiting. Do we have what it takes to make our way through House of Wolves? Find out next time. Don't forget to like or comment if you enjoyed. For now, I'm out. Goodbye.